in the heart of an ancient Romanian village. Hidden between steep mountains and forests thick with shadows, rumors spread of a dark visitor of vampire who moved in silence. Leaving behind neither proof nor witnesses, the villagers whispered of him as asterisk umber de foc asterisk, or the shadow of fire, for he was said to bear the mark of flames in his gaze, an ember that sparked terror in those who dared look him in the eye. Few in the village knew his name, and fewer still knew his purpose, but stories claim that long ago, a nobleman's son disappeared from the nearby castle under mysterious circumstances, never to be seen again. Many said he had perished, others claimed he had joined the legions of the undead, cursed to roam the world as a creature of the night, and now, they whispered, he had returned with a vengeance, as shadows grew longer and mist clung to the mountain pots. Sightings of asterisk umber de foc asterisk became more frequent. Shepherds returning late would find their flocks uneasy, sheep and goats staring into the woods as though sensing an unholy presence. Children spoke of seeing red eyes watching them from the forest's edge, only for the vision to vanish before anyone else could witness it. In the dead of night, a villager named Mercia, bold and skeptical, ventured into the heart of the forest, carrying a silver pendant and clutching a sharpened stake. He had heard of the ancient vampire's haunt and decided it was high time to confront the beast. But as he neared a clearing rumor to be the vampire's resting place, he felt a chill creep into his bones, and his torch flickered in the unnatural cold. A voice, low and sinister, echoed through the trees, you dare trespass on forbidden ground, mortal. Mercia spun around, heart pounding, and saw a figure shrouded in darkness. Pale skin, eyes that glowed like embers, and a face that seemed both young and old. Frozen in an eternal, eerie beauty, you have come to stop me, asterisk umber de foc asterisk said, a faint smile curling at his lips. But I have wandered this earth for centuries, tasted the life of empires and watched them crumble. What do you think a simple villager can do? Mercia stood his ground, trembling yet resolute, gripping his stake tighter. But as he looked into the vampire's fiery eyes, a strange sensation overcame him. His grip loosened, and he felt an unbearable sadness a longing for something lost, a world beyond his understanding. In that moment, he saw flashes of memories that weren't his own. Images of castles bathed in moonlight, grand halls now empty, and a once noble life reduced to an eternity of solitude. Before Mercia could react, the vampire leaned closer, his voice like the soft hiss of a flame. Go back to your village and spread the word. Tell them their fate is sealed, for I am not the only one who walks these woods. The time of mortals is fading. With a rush of icy wind, asterisk umber de foc asterisk vanished, leaving Mercia alone in the clearing. Dazed and haunted by what he had seen, Mercia stumbled back to the village, his mind filled with fear and the memory of those burning eyes. And though he could barely speak of his encounter, the villagers sensed something dark looming on the horizon. From that night on, no one dared speak the name asterisk umber de foc asterisk aloud, and the fires of their hearts burned dimmer, as if the shadows themselves had begun to close in around them. But whispers grew of other figures emerging from the forest, cloaked in darkness. As though asterisk umber de foc asterisk was calling his kin from the depths of forgotten realms, the village braced for an unknown fate, unaware that this was only the beginning. In the days following Mercia's encounter with asterisk umber de foc asterisk, the village felt like it was holding its breath. Shadows deepened, and the fog settled heavier than before, clinging to the rooftops and curling around the trees like bony fingers. Animals grew restless, and the villagers noticed their own unease, an unnatural chill that set in at sunset and lingered well into the morning. Marcia had not spoken much since that night, though his eyes still held a trace of fire from the encounter. His once bold demeanor had been replaced by a strange, silent fear. He seemed to have aged, his hands shaking slightly as he worked, as though a part of him had been left behind in the forest with the vampire. Some claimed he had been cursed, while others speculated he had become a spy for asterisk umber de foc asterisk himself, working in silence to lure them all to their doom. One evening, as the villagers gathered in the old chapel to discuss these strange occurrences, a loud knock came at the heavy wooden doors, 
they froze, exchanging worried glances, for no one had approached the village from the outside in months. Slowly, the oldest of them, Father Andre, opened the door. Outside stood a young woman, wrapped in a dark cloak that seemed to thin for the cold. Her face was pale, almost ashen, and her eyes had an unsettling gleam. Not unlike the embers Mercia had described in asterisk umber de Falk asterisk's gaze. I come with a message from the forest, she said, her voice low and haunting. She looked around the room, her stare heavy on each villager, and when her eyes fell on Mercia, he flinched, a faint tremor passing through him. The woman stepped forward, her movements fluid, almost too graceful, as if she floated rather than walked. I am Medella, and I bring a warning she continued, her voice carrying an ancient authority. The vampire who once haunted your woods has returned with others beings older and darker than him. They have no interest in bargains or parlay. Asterisk Umber de Falk Asterisk has summoned them, for he grows weary of solitude. Now, he gathers his kind. The villagers murmured in terror. Mercia broke into a sweat, his eyes widening as Adela's words sank in. But why? He managed to ask, voice trembling. Why come for us now, after all these years? Adela's gaze softened for a moment, almost as if she pitied them. He comes not out of hatred, but out of hunger a hunger that none of you could understand. But I tell you this, there is still one way to avoid the worst of what he plans. Her eyes darkened, her gaze darting to Mercia again, then back to the others. To stop him, Someone must willingly enter the cursed realm beyond the forest, a place known as the Ashen Vale, and confront the source of his power. His strength comes from an ancient relic hidden there, one that binds him and his kin to this world. The villagers gasped, but the horror in Mercia's eyes was unmistakable. He recognized the task before him, and he knew the Ashen Vale well from the stories he'd heard as a child. It was said to be a shadowy dimension existing just beyond the veil of this world a place where sunlight never reached, where lost souls and forgotten memories lingered, and time itself was fractured. Adela's voice grew softer, almost wistful, but beware, for if you should fail, your soul will become part of the ashen veil, bound to wander for eternity, feeding the darkness that gives asterisk umber de Falk asterisk his strength. With that, she turned and walked back into the night, her figure fading into the fog. The villagers looked at each other in silence, knowing that a terrible decision lay ahead. Mercia clenched his jaw, a grim resolve settling in his heart. He would enter the Ashen Vale and face the vampire's curse head on. But as he left, none could shake the feeling that Adela had known too much about the village, its secrets, and their fears. Some began to wonder if she was just a messenger, or if she, too, had something darker in her blood. As Mercia took his first steps toward the Ashen Vale, the village was left with one haunting question. Was he walking into the shadows to save them? Or was he being lured into a trap from which no soul could ever return? As Mercia ventured deeper into the forest, each step grew heavier. As if unseen hands were pulling him back, clawing at his resolve, shadows clung to him like whispers, voices low and incomprehensible echoing through the trees. He gripped his silver pendant, the only source of warmth in the bone-chilling air, and pressed on. Determined to find this ashen veil and the relic that held asterisk umber de Falk asterisk's power, the path was barely visible under the thick fog, winding deeper into the heart of the forest. And the forest itself seemed to shift with each step, as if it had become a living labyrinth designed to trap him. After what felt like hours, he reached a peculiar clearing bathed in a silvery, unnatural light. At its center lay a massive stone archway, ancient and covered in strange symbols that seemed to pulse faintly in the darkness. This, he knew, was the gate to the Ashen Vale. Taking a steadying breath, Mercia stepped forward. As he passed through the archway, a wave of cold washed over him, colder than anything he'd ever felt. The world shifted around him and he found himself standing in a desolate landscape bathed in perpetual twilight. The sky above was an endless stretch of ashen clouds, and the air was thick with the scent of decay. The ground was littered with remnants of old, twisted trees and crumbled ruins of forgotten civilizations, all frozen in a moment of despair. Yet the strangest part was the silence. There was no sound, no wind, no rustling leaves, 
Not even the distant call of a bird. Only the muffled beat of his own heart reminded him he was alive. As he walked further, he saw figures in the distance, vague forms draped in shadow. They seemed like statues at first, unmoving and silent. But as he approached, he realized with horror that these were the souls Adela had spoken of trapped spirits, condemned to wander forever in the veil. Their eyes, empty and hollow, watched him as he passed, their faces twisted in silent torment. Some reached out as he walked by, their fingers barely grazing him, their touch like ice. A faint glow in the distance caught his attention. There, on a stone pedestal, lay the relic a small, crystalline vial filled with a swirling, dark substance that pulsed like a heartbeat. He knew at once that this was the source of Asterisk Umber Defog Asterisk's power, the heart of the curse binding him to this realm. Mercia reached for the relic, but just as his fingers grazed it, a voice echoed behind him a familiar, mournful whisper. You should not have come. He spun around to see Adela standing there, her face pale, yet her expression unreadable. I warned you of the dangers, she said, her voice carrying both regret and satisfaction. But you came anyway, drawn by the promise of salvation. Or was it revenge? Mercia felt a surge of confusion and anger. You told me this was the way to end his power. A sad smile played on Adela's lips. I told you what you needed to hear. But the truth is, once you take the relic, you will inherit the curse. The relic binds not just Asterisk Umber D. Falk Asterisk, but his entire kin. Destroying it would release them all, and their hunger for the world would be endless. A wave of despair hit him, the weight of his mission suddenly doubling in gravity. Then, there is no way to stop him. There is one way, Adela whispered, stepping closer. Her gaze softened, almost pleading. You could take his place. By accepting the relic's burden, you would become the new guardian of the veil. You would keep the darkness contained, and the world beyond would remain safe. But you would be bound here, just as he is. Mercia felt his heart sink. To save his village, to end the nightmare, he would have to surrender his own life No, His very soul to this forsaken realm. He looked into Adela's eyes, searching for any hint of deception, but all he saw was sorrow, a reflection of the fate she herself had perhaps once accepted. But then, another thought crossed his mind, something darker, more twisted. What are asterisk you asterisk, Adela? How do you know so much? Adela's eyes flickered, the faintest glimmer of guilt showing through. I, he am like him, she admitted quietly. Long ago, I too was cursed to this existence. Asterisk Umber D. Falk Asterisk and I were once bound by blood, by love, but we are prisoners of our own desires, our own sins. Mercia's heart pounded as he realized the depth of her words. This was no simple mission he had been drawn here by design, manipulated by those who walked these cursed lands. Choose wisely, Mercia, she murmured, her voice fading as her form dissolved into the shadows. Once you touch the relic, there is no going back. He stood there his hand hovering above the relic. Knowing that every moment he hesitated brought his village closer to doom. But as he felt the pulse of darkness emanating from the vial, he realized that there was yet another choice of forbidden. Desperate choice that neither Adela nor Asterisk Umber D. Falk Asterisk had foreseen. With a fierce resolve, he reached for the relic, but instead of taking it, he whispered a prayer. Invoking an ancient rite he'd learned only in childhood tales, the veil began to tremble, and the spirits trapped within stirred, as though awakening to his call. And in that moment, as the ground beneath him began to shake and the shadows themselves recoiled, Mercia knew he was defying both the veil and its dark rulers. Yet he also understood that this choice would bring him no peace, only the eternal wrath of the creatures bound to the curse. The ashen veil roared around him, and in its depths, Asterisk Umber D. Falk Asterisk stirred his fiery eyes blazing with fury as he sensed the betrayal. As the ashen veil trembled and cracked around him, Mercia held his ground, his prayer growing louder, steadier. The power of the relic surged through the realm like a wild, writhing force, resisting him, clawing at his very soul, but he did not falter. He pressed his palm against the crystal vial, feeling the icy sting of its curse, and welled every ounce of his resolve into his words. The trapped spirits of the veil began to stir, their hollow faces lifting to watch him. Drawn to his defiance, 
They moved as if awakening from an endless nightmare, their eyes flickering with the faintest hints of light. With each word Mercia spoke, the veil's darkness loosened, cracking like brittle stone under the weight of a forgotten hope. Then, just as his strength began to wane, a bright, blinding light broke through the ashen clouds above, spilling over the desolate land. The warmth of it was overwhelming, flooding the veil in a radiance it had not seen in centuries. The shadows hissed and recoiled, and the spirits gasped, their faces filled with relief and awe. And in that moment, Mercia felt a presence beside him, Adela, her form more human than he'd seen before, her eyes wide with wonder as the light touched her face. Her voice trembled as she whispered, What have you done? Something neither you nor asterisk umber de Falk asterisk would have dared to try, Mercia replied softly, a faint smile forming on his lips. I didn't come to destroy the veil or bind myself to it, I came to set you all free. The relic pulsed in his hand, and with a final surge of will, Mercia crushed it, shattering the dark crystal into a thousand sparkling shards. The dark substance inside dissolved into the air, a faint wisp that was quickly swept away by the light flooding the veil. The ground beneath them shook one last time before it began to calm, and with it, the veil itself started to change. The twisted, Barren trees grew a pride, sprouting leaves of silvery green, and the ruins around them shifted back to a state of haunting beauty. The souls, once bound by despair, slowly regained form and color, their hollow eyes filling with life and gratitude. The veil, once a realm of eternal twilight, was reborn into a land of serene dusk and soft light, no longer a prison but a peaceful sanctuary for the lost. Adela looked at Mercia, a tear slipping down her cheek as she regained her full human form. Thank you, she whispered, her voice laced with relief, for freeing us, for reminding us of the lives we once had. From deep within the forest, a figure emerged asterisk umber de Falk asterisk, his fiery gaze now softened, his face, no longer twisted in torment, looked upon Mercia with a strange mix of respect and surrender. You have done what I could not, what I dared not, he admitted, his voice carrying a weight of centuries. The curse is broken, and so is my hunger. He stepped forward, extending a hand toward Mercia in gratitude. You saved not just your village, but all those touched by this darkness. Mercia nodded, a sense of peace settling within him. Then go in peace, all of you. Let your souls find rest. With those words, asterisk umber de Falk asterisk Adela and the other freed souls slowly faded into the gentle dusk, their forms dissolving like morning mist under the warm light. The veil transformed around him, becoming a land of quiet beauty, and Mercia knew that this cursed place had finally found redemption. When he returned to the village, the people greeted him with tears and cheers, for they knew by his expression that the darkness had lifted. Peace returned to their lives, and the tales of Asterisk Umber D. Falk Asterisk and the Cursed Veil vale became legends, rattled in fireside whispers as stories of bravery, sacrifice, and the strength to defy even the darkest of fates. Mercia, the man who had freed an entire world from its curse, lived his days as a hero, his heart forever at peace, knowing that he had not only saved his people but restored hope to those who had lost it for centuries, and in his dreams, he sometimes saw a beautiful dusk-lit realm where souls walked in peace, no longer shadows, but bathed in eternal, gentle light.